Okay, fine, I'll talk about Relic Terminators. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and today we're gonna be diving back into some data sheets with a much requested one. A couple weeks ago, I talked about Terminators on the request of my Tactical Tortoise patrons over at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. And if you want to request new data sheet deep dive topics and vote for topics, then you can head on over there and uh, drop me a, a patronage. That would be sweet and it would help support the channel and I really appreciate it. And the number one comment that everyone left in that video was, why didn't we talk about Relic Terminators? Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna talk about some Relic Terminators and as we do in all these data sheet deep dive videos, we're gonna talk about this data sheet, the Relic Terminator squad. I'm gonna talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the stats on the data sheet, their war gear loadouts. I'm gonna brush briefly over synergies we can use with them. In addition, I'm gonna compare this unit to the regular Terminator squad. And to close everything out, I'm gonna render a final verdict on this data sheet, whether or not Relic Terminators are worth considering for your Space Marine army. Before we get into the video, just a quick reminder to like and subscribe, you know, all that YouTube stuff. So now you're done doing that, Let's talk about this data sheet. So before we get directly into the data sheet, I wanted to go over a little bit of background of this unit for people who might be new to the game or don't recognize this particular kit. The Relic Terminator Squad used to be a series of data sheets in the old version of the Space Marine Codex that represented Terminator variants from the Horus Heresy, I believe is uh, when this armor was uh, meant to be in use. And those particularly were the Cataphractii Terminators and the Tartarus Terminators, there they are. In previous versions of the Codex, each of these had their own set of rules. The Cataphractii, I think were a little bit more heavily armored and were uh, slower. The Tartarus had a different rule that I don't remember off the top of my head. But the amalgamation of these two units is supposed to be what the Relic Terminator Squad data sheet represents. So if you look up on the Games Workshop website and you're looking for Relic Terminators to put into your army, you will not find any. They are meant to be these Cataphractii or Tartaros Terminators. So Relic Terminators are an elite's choice for a Space Marine army. And the first thing to notice about them is that they're they're just regular Terminators. Just like a normal Terminator squad, we get nine, uh, we get between four and nine Terminators plus a Sergeant. Move five, three plus weapon skill and ballistic skill, just like every other Space Marine. Strength four, toughness four. We get the three wounds as is to be expected of a Terminator, as well as two attacks, eight or nine leadership, depending on if you're the Sergeant or not, and a two plus save. They also have the Angels of Death Combat Squads, Teleport Strike, Crux, Terminatus rules as well as Deathwing and Wolfguard, if you take them in those particular chapters. It's just a regular Terminator squad, ladies and gentlemen, and none of their stats are different. A couple things are different, however. The first one, and the most important, I think, being their points cost. Unlike a normal Terminator squad that comes out at 38 points a model, the Relic Terminators start at 34. Now, they do have a couple upgrades baked in. First off, they have a Power Fist, and unlike the standard Shooty Terminator squad, they do have to pay for their Power Fists. The Power Fists are 5 points, so we're really looking at 39 points a model, which is, in fact, one more point per model than a standard Terminator squad. But you do have to realize that the Terminator Sergeant comes with a Power Fist, not a Power Sword. So they've sort of baked in the cost for that additional upgrade into the base cost of the Terminator squad. Uh, it's a little bit of a weird way to go about it, but it works out. I'd much prefer having... A the power fist on my terminator sergeant anyway the swords just not very good now a couple of other obvious things to notice note about this data sheet while despite being a different unit they are just normal terminator keyworded so they do benefit from all of the synergies that your normal terminators will their core infantry so they'll benefit from all your re-rolls and all of your cool auras and your litanies and all that stuff it all works just the same as it does for a regular terminator squad now, we already mentioned a couple war gear differences between this unit and the standard shooty Terminators. And war gear is really what differentiates this entire unit from their successors, I guess. Interestingly, the each model is armed with a combi bolter, not a storm bolter. They're the same. It's just a storm bolter. The standard two shots... Four if you're at half range, but really four all the time because they're a Relic Terminator shooting a bolt weapon. They also have a different suite of heavy weapons and actually some additional options in addition to heavy weapons, which are very cool. First up, uh, their two heavy weapon options are 
actually really bad. They're, they're not much to, to talk about at all. The Heavy Flamer is the first one. We talked about this in the Terminator video, but Heavy Flamers are not a good option for Terminators. You Their expected damage output isn't even that much more than the Storm Bolter they're replacing. Their range is shorter, so they don't get to attack with it as many times. It's just not good. Just, you don't, don't bring this. Just write this one off. The one that you will actually be taking most of the time, I believe, is the Reaper Auto Cannon, which is kind of the predecessor to the Assault Cannon, I guess. It trades two additional shots for some extra extra strength, AP, and range. The range is very nice, and the strength is it's okay. The AP is good, but this is, I think, in general, going to be a downgrade from the standard Assault Cannon. However, it only comes in at 5 points rather than 10. So you're already saving some points on these guys, and those savings are going to get kind of crazy as we go through this data sheet. The other option that the unit has is, in addition to their heavy weapon, one model for every five can have a grenade harness in addition to their other weapons. This doesn't replace anything, they just get it on top, so it's kind of like the Cyclone Missile Launcher in a standard Terminator squad, except you also get a heavy weapon as well. Very cool. It's a 12-inch range D6 blast weapon uh, that comes in at strength 4, interestingly AP1. You get to shoot this in addition to your other weapons. There's no claws against that. It's an assault weapon, not a pistol or something like that, so they can just chuck a grenade and shoot their gun. It's not a regular grenade. It's, it's a special harness. So... That's really cool, actually, and especially if this unit is coming out of Deep Strike uh, with its Teleport Strike, they're, they're going to start in range to use their Grenade Harness and be able to pick off a couple infantry, having an AP value, and also, importantly, being an Assault Weapon, which means it benefits from Tactical Doctrine, means that you get the extra AP bonus from that Doctrine on that Harness for an extra turn, which means that, I mean, D6 shots at Strength 4 minus 1 will plink a wound or two off even heavier targets relatively consistently, and for 5 points and not losing any other fire from the unit, that's a great deal. The last option that this unit has is the Terminator Sergeant can switch out their Combi Bolter or their Storm Bolter for an alternative special weapon. The two options they have is a Volkite Charger, which is a two-shot heavy weapon. It comes in at strength five, zero AP for two damage, but has the sniper roll where it inflicts mortal wounds on wound rolls of a six. Only a 20-inch range in a heavy weapon. This is garbage. Just throw this thing out. I... Who came up with this idea? Just terrible. The actual cool option is the Plasma Blaster, which is essentially, uh, it's an Assault 2 Plasma Gun, effectively. It's two shots all the time at 18 inches, rather than uh, two shots at 12 inches and a maximum of 24. The range is a little bit less, but you are a Terminator squad, and so the goal is to be kind of up in the thick of it anyway, so range 18 should be fine. And it has the standard two Plasma Profiles, one at Strength 7 AP3 for one damage, one at Strength 8, AP3 for two damage and you might kill yourself. Now, the downside is that you do have to put this on the sergeant, so you do lose his attack and leadership point if he kills himself, which sucks. But you should probably be trying to situate these guys around a reroll one's aura, so the chance of him killing himself with his supercharge is relatively low. So already, we have some really interesting weapon options for this unit. And the interesting options continue as we move to the melee weapons. Obviously, the unit comes stock with a power fist. But unlike the shooty Terminators, who I, if you remember in that Terminator video, I lamented having to stick with their power fist because it's such a weird option to have on a shooting unit or a, a shooty-centric unit. Terminators are very much trying to be a jack-of-all-trades, except their low speed value makes it very difficult for, for them to actually use those expensive melee weapons. Relic Terminators have cut me off at the pass by just uh, not even having to take those expensive melee weapons. Instead of keeping their Power Fist, they can switch it for a Lightning Claw. And if you'll notice, the Lightning Claw is free. So that's awesome. So while at their standard loadout, the Relic Terminators are one point more expensive than a standard Terminator squad, you can just cut that Power Fist entirely off to make them instead four points less expensive than the standard Terminator squad. And in addition, their heavy weapons are way less expensive than the standard Terminators, who you're usually either going to pay 10 points for an Assault Cannon on, or 25 for a Cyclone Missile Launcher. Like, wow, they really knew how to build them for cheap, you know, back in the Horus Heresy. Lightning Claws are obviously a pretty interesting stat line. They come in a base strength of four, just strength user, AP two for one damage. However, each Lightning Claw you have equipped with gives you an additional attack with it. So for these guys, you could potentially drop both their Storm Bolter and their Power Fist for two Lightning Claws, and you're gonna be swinging four base attacks, five on the charge, and rerolling all of your wound rolls. Now, honestly, I don't think that I recommend you do this. I think the Lightning Claw build of Terminators is much more effective in the Assault Terminator squad, where you can have Storm Shields baked into the squad so that they're a little bit more survivable. The Lightning Claws 
are just going to be slow. They don't have any shooting when they're going up the table if you take all lightning claws, and they're just not doing anything to your opponent. I don't think that's particularly viable, but if you want to focus entirely on shooting, you can make the unit pretty efficient by dropping off the expensive power fist. It's not like they become totally impotent in melee with just the lightning claw. Obviously, it's not quite as terrifying, especially to high toughness as the power fist is, but I mean, they're swinging it four attacks a piece on the charge, full rerolls to wounds. Like they're going to dice you up. They're going to kill a lot of infantry. And this unit becomes much more of an infantry blender than the standard Terminator squad does. Now, interestingly, we also have the options to equip the Terminator sergeant with his power sword just like we see in the standard terminator squad i don't think you're going to be doing this typically and just like the standard terminators we also have the option to swap all of their power fists for chain fists if you are bringing the big punchy weapon in this like i talked about in the terminator squad video you're just going to do that chain fists are almost a strict upgrade against power fists there are a few specific matchups in which the flat two damage on the power fist is better than the D3 on the chain fist, but the chain fist gets plus one AP on top of that. So it is almost always better than the poor power fist. So with all that in mind, that gives us a pretty clear picture of what this unit is trying to be. And that is a more flexible, if a little bit more anti-infantry focused version of a Terminator squad than the shooting Terminators are. They don't have the same sort of long range heavy damage output that you can get out of the Cyclone missile launchers, but they have a lot of different weapon profiles they're going to bring to bear. They got those combi bolters, they got grenades they're throwing at you, they got the auto cannons, they got the plasma guns. It's just a team of protagonists from an action movie. You know, everybody in the unit's got their favorite weapon. They got the grenade guy, you got the big gun guy, the heavy weapon guy, you got the plasma gun guy, you got the combi bolter guy, you got all sorts of guys, you got the one lightning claw guy in there, he's a weirdo, probably played by Jet Li or maybe Hugh Jackman, that, that probably would have been a better <laughs> reference, I guess. Now this is normally the section of the video where I would talk about synergies and different stratagems and abilities and combos you can use to build this data sheet into an unstoppable killing machine that will destroy your opponent in totality, but this is a... Uh, this is just a Terminator squad, so if you want to do that, just turn this video off, go watch the Terminator video, and all of the synergies and combos that I talk about there will hold true for this one. So go do that. I'll put a link down in the description and uh, come back when you're done. <laughs> Let's move on to comparing this unit to the standard Terminator squad and really trying to break down mathematically whether or not they're worth taking. So what I did was I compared the two unit loadouts with, I think, what is essentially an optimal loadout. A unit of five standard Terminators with a Cyclone Missile Launcher, their five Storm Bolters, coming in at 215 points versus a unit of five fully loaded Relic Terminators. I knocked their Power Fists off down to Lightning Claws just to get the most efficient shooting build we could out of them but packed them full of special weapons. We got the Plasma Blaster in there. We got the Reaper Auto Cannon in there. We got the Grenade Harness in there. We got three Combi Bolters ready to go. And I pitted them against some of the game's most common defensive stat lines, those being Guardsman Equivalents at Toughness 3, 5 plus save with one wound. Marine Equivalents at Toughness 4 with a 3 plus save and two wounds. Vehicle Equivalents, which are Toughness 7, 3 plus save, and we're just counting the, the amount of damage we can do there, not necessarily kills. And last, but certainly not least, Knight Equivalents coming in at Toughness 8 with a 3 plus armor save, 5 plus invulnerable save, and we're going to see which version is the most efficient. Now, a couple other things I should note here. I did count these units as moving. That doesn't matter for their bolter weapons or their assault weapons. However, it does for the heavy Heavy weapons, those are all going to be minus one to hit in this particular case. That's because, I mean, they're probably deep striking in or at least moving out of cover to get range with those weapons. So I think those will be the most common battlefield conditions for them. And because they're probably coming out of deep strike and most of the fighting in 40k gets done on round two and three, I assumed that they were in tactical doctrine, so all their assault and rapid fire weapons would get plus one AP, but their heavy weapons would not be affected. I also didn't include any additional buffs on them. Obviously, you can get reroll ones on these guys with a million different ways. You can get plus one to hit on them from Fury of the First. There's a bunch of different things to do. Now, in the first category versus Guardsman equivalents, the Cyclone Missile Launcher build actually came up a little bit ahead. I did give all the blast weapons a little bit of bump in their attack count because of the blast keyword. So those grenade harnesses and the Cyclone Missile Launchers are going to do a little bit more. And we do see that come through here a little bit with a higher number of expected kills coming out of the standard Terminator unit.
However, the Relic Terminator is being able to leave their Power Fists at home, meaning the unit is a full 30 points less expensive than the standard Terminator unit. That's including the fact that there's a 25 point cycle missile launcher on those guys. So even though they do less damage per model than the cycle missile launcher equipped standard Terminators do, the Relic Terminators are actually pretty significantly more points efficient when it comes to killing these little infantry. And they're going to be do better in melee as well because they're probably going to have those lightning claws over the power fists. Versus marine equivalents, things start heading solidly in the Relic Terminator's direction. Where appropriate, I had the Plasma Blaster overcharge, and this is a situation where you're probably going to be overcharging versus those two wound marines. And having that flat two damage weapon uh, just chipping away at those guys with a very high AP, with the uh, under tactical doctrine, it comes in AP4, so it just punches directly through their armor save. Uh, they actually uh, out damage and outperform the standard Terminators with almost three Marine equivalent models killed uh, at a 65.3 points per kill. Versus vehicle equivalents, the trend continues with the Relic Terminators significantly out damaging the standard Terminators. And this is where the kind of volume of attacks we see from these, the Reaper Auto Cannon as well as the Grenade Harness starts to sort of be able to whittle down these larger targets. And while they're not quite as effective against the Knight equivalent units, they are still light years more efficient uh, than the standard Cycle Missile Launcher Terminators in that category as well. So, whoa! Relic Terminators are way better at shooting for way less points than the standard Terminator unit. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I did not really expect this result when I first looked at their data sheet. I was like, all right, there's their Terminators with extra steps. That's cool. But it turns out the breadth of weapon options they have makes them good in a variety of situations while they're shooting. Now, that said, having the Strength 8 weapons in the standard Terminator squad is very useful. But that said, I mean, these Relic Terminators are just are essentially going to outdamage them and outperform them in almost every way in the shooting phase. You do start to pay the price on this unit if you do equip the Power Fists on them. So they are going to significantly underperform against heavily armored targets in melee. But... That doesn't happen that often. Terminators have always been an anti-chaff unit. They want to hit a horde of orc boys and shoot them 40 times and then charge them and get stuck in and just grind them down on their 2 plus armor saves. And it feels to me like Relic Terminators, that's exactly what they want to do. What they don't do is supersede Assault Terminators. I don't think that these Lightning Claw builds on the Relic Terminators are particularly viable. They are not as defensively oriented as Assault Terminators. They don't have the same, you know, level of options. And one thing I don't think I mentioned is that neither of these units have act is that this unit also does not have access to a teleport homer like the standard Terminator squads do. So once they're down on the table, they're stuck there and they can never redeploy ever again, which is a little bit of a downside compared to those other Terminator units. So we're kind of in a final verdict territory here. So let's move on and talk about the final verdict of Relic Terminators. Should you put them in your army? And the answer is, yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that a Relic Terminator squad is both more efficient and outshoots a standard Terminator squad in most situations. Great. Job done. We figured it out. Now, obviously what they don't do, like I mentioned before, they don't overshadow Assault Terminators. They're not going to be as good in melee. Bespoke Terminator units, things like Deathwing Terminators and Deathwing Bodyguards and Deathwing Knights and Wolfguard Terminators and all of these weird Terminator variants that each individual chapter has, these do not really hold a candle to those. Those are head and shoulders above the standard Terminator squads and they're going to be the same for the Relic Terminators. That's a little bit of a downside of having the Relic Terminators be like their own separate kind of weird data sheet that exists in its own little universe separate from all the other Terminators. But if you are thinking of running a standard Terminator squad and the main goal of it is to shoot at people with guns, it should probably be a Relic Terminator squad. If you're not really expecting it to get into melee and especially if you want it to kill kind of hordes of infantry, Relic Terminators are going to be sick at it. Especially with effects like Catechism of Fire or Crucible of Battle that add plus one to wound on them, because they have such a wide volume of attacks, the plus one to wound is just going to make them that much better. You know, you're coming in with a unit of these 10 Terminators. They're going to have two Reaper Auto Cannons. They're going to have two Grenade Harnesses. They're going to have seven Storm Bolters to shoot. It's just a withering volume of shots to put down on something. And any damage buffs you can get on those high volume attacks are going to pay you back in full. 
So all in all, this has been a pretty interesting data sheet deep dive. I definitely wasn't expecting this result when I first looked at Relic Terminator squads, but man, do they look impressive now that I've taken a look at them. Now, in fairness, Terminators in general and even Relic Terminators aren't particularly efficient. They pay a lot of points for that two plus save and that additional wound, getting up to three wounds. And while that's uh, usually annoying to kill, unfortunately move five kind of traps them in areas of the board and a lot of times they won't really get to where they need to before the game's over. So Terminators certainly are not built for every list, but again, if you're looking to shoot a person with a Terminator guy, it might as well be a Relic Terminator guy. Anyways, thanks for watching this data sheet deep dive, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, big thanks to my patrons over at patreon.com slash tacticaltourists. You can go over there to join them for early access to videos and voting on videos and early access to tournament pods on the Discord channel. If you haven't visited us over there, you should. We play 40k online all the time, and it's super fun. And everyone supporting the Patreon is sweet, and I like them a lot. So with that, remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming. <laughs>